Hi, everyone. This is Ed Mabry with faithbyreason.net, and I am here with Pastor Jerry Gerardo of Lighthouse Christian Church. And we're very excited to come to you today. We want to talk about uh, a little about Jerry's message from the, the current message from, from this Sunday, and it's all about how God wants just us to deal with anxiety. And we are in a very anxious period of time. We are dealing with a worldwide pandemic. We have people losing their jobs. The economy is, is suffering. And that leads, of course, to anxiety. But we also have our God, our Heavenly Father, who does not want us to be anxious. And, when, and now that we're in this, this situation with COVID, our immunity and staying healthy is a really huge thing. And interestingly, science has taught us that two of the biggest detriments to our immune system is lack of sleep and anxiety, anxiousness, worrying. So Pastor Jerry, can you tell us a little bit about how God wants us to deal with anxiousness, how God sees anxiety, and, 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 and what his advice is about it? Absolutely, Ed. Thanks, first of all, for having me on. Really appreciate this opportunity to connect with you and Faith by Reason. But uh, yeah, the message on anxieties, as you were pointing out, relates to every human being. We all face challenges, fears, anxieties of all kinds. And it's so helpful to know that our Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, doesn't want us to be anxious. He tells us that in Scripture. Jesus talks about that. Don't be anxious about anything. If we pray to him, if we trust in him, if we have this understanding that he can bring about perfect peace in our lives, no matter how the storms rage, then it can settle us and help us to have a more effective and productive life and a healthier life. It's really fascinating, but you're right. Medical science tells us that anxieties can really drive us down and pull us down, not just in terms of our spirit, but in terms of our actual physical health. Scripture even talks about this in different ways, but in Proverbs chapter uh, 12, verse 25, it says anxiety in the heart of a person weighs it down. And when it weighs us, when things weigh us down, we're fighting against something. We're, we're trying to take control of something that perhaps we can't even control or shouldn't control. And as we expend all of that energy our body gets worn out and then we can't rest, we can't recover and our health declines. So God's advice for us is practical always. And I love faith by reason because it's this common sense. God doesn't just tell us, hey, blithely go about your life. Just trust in me. Everything's great. God says everything is fine at the end of the day and, and trust in me and have a peace in me, but also operate with the wisdom that I share with you. So we tell people, even at church, hey, do the practical things to safeguard your health. That's important. God tells us throughout scripture to safeguard our health as sure. well as safeguarding our hearts. So, and, and the great keys for me are right there in scripture. And there's a prescription in Philippians chapter four, where God tells us to rejoice in him and petition him in all things. Just trust in him, put the petitions out there and pray for all kinds of things. But don't be anxious about anything because God himself through Jesus Christ can give us a peace that even transcends what our normal understanding would be. God can give you a peace in the midst of the most unbelievable stressful time like a COVID season. So we just love our Lord and how he blesses us with this knowledge and this power and this ability to focus in a way and do things that promote our own health and can help others. That's fantastic. Um, thank you so much for, for that, that word. And so that tells us what God thinks about anxiety and how he wants us to handle it. But I also want to talk about the why. And I think one of the whys that we don't really think about too much, why does God not want us to be anxious? It's not because he just wants a bunch of happy-go-lucky people. Yep. <laughs> I think it's also because anxiousness does not fit into his plan. And when we're anxious, we, we're going against his plan. And there's something I don't think a lot of people think about when it comes to anxiety and worrying is that there's a pride aspect to it as well, Pastor Jerry. I think that yeah. when we are worried, whenever we're worried, why are we worried? It's because something is happening out of our control. Yeah. And we're worried because we're trying to bring it back into our control instead of giving it to God and letting him control, and control it. That's pride. That's us taking control of things. And God always admonishes us to do the opposite of that. So can you talk a little bit about how worrying can maybe interfere with God's plan? And, and maybe that's one of the reasons why God um, admonishes us so much not to be anxious and worry? 
A absolutely. No, it's such a great point because it really drives deep into how we're set up and how we operate as human beings. You know, God has given us free will and so we can operate independently and we want to direct our lives in, in many directions to accomplish things that are, that are important to us or we really desire. But what's important to understand is that God has the best plan for us. In scripture, it even says in Proverbs 16, 9 that, you know, man will make his plans, but God will direct his steps. If we follow God's path for our lives, it's such a better path. It, it brings to mind the whole episode with the Apostle Paul, who was named Saul, who literally was doing things to go against God and against his people early on in the early church and to even bring him to prison. And God just stopped him short on the road to Damascus, blinded him and stopped him and talked to him. Jesus talked to him, he says, why are you kicking against the goads? Why are you hurting? Why are you, why are you rebelling against me? We have this state of rebelling against God. It's our natural state. And if we come into alignment with what God wants, then we can truly trust and know, hey, all things work out for good for those who are called according to God's purposes and who love him. That's yeah. Romans 8, 28, one of my life verses. I love that verse because it just tells me if I'm in alignment with God's purposes, following after him. And Jesus even tells us this. He tells us, he says, if anyone wants to come after me, he must actually deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Forever who wants to save his life will lose it. And the opposite is also true. Whoever loses his life, surrenders it to me, will gain eternal life, will gain what I really have in store for them and all the blessing. And I can tell you, Ed, and every human being is the same. I have kicked against God. I rebelled. I tried to manipulate circumstances and things that I was never supposed to control and force my way. I can be a forceful guy. Any, any one of us can be a forceful person. And at times, God would just have to kind of smack me alongside the head to say, wow, why are you just pounding your head over here? This door is closed. Here's the door. Follow me over here and follow me by honoring me, trusting in me, walking with me and following Lord Jesus and his examples. And as I do that, it's amazing how the peace comes into play, this peace that transcends understanding. So this issue of trying to control relates to this very pride. Hey, I want to be my own person. I want to make all my decisions and have control. If, if God would grant me, I'd love to have control of the universe. Well, he didn't give that right to me. And he doesn't even give that to me for my own life. He wants me to surrender my life to him so that then he, with his perfect plan and his perfect involvement, is going to steer me along a path that's going to honor him and bless me and bless others. Because when I'm trying to control circumstances, oftentimes it's going to be to the detriment of others. It'll be trying to control what others do and think instead of allowing them to be who they are in Christ Jesus. Sure. That is fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Jerry, for that word. And if you want to see the entire message, it's, on, it's here on the, uh, the Lighthouse YouTube channel. There's, there are links that you will see in the descriptions here. You can go there and watch the entire message. It is fantastic. It's uplifting and it's perfect for these times. So Pastor Jerry, again, I want to thank you for, for coming on with me. And we will talk again next week when we just talk about uh, the, the next message you have. So thank you so much and you have a great blessed day. Awesome. You too, Ed. Thank you so much. God bless you, brother. Bless you too. <laughs>